I made a detailed Vopex overview a year ago, and since then I've been playing lots more games and I've learnt some new stuff. So I thought I'd make a new video, share some of my game recommendations and some of the little tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. If you haven't seen my other video and you want a more general overview of what Vopex is, check the link to the old video which is in the description. Also, this isn't a sponsored video, I bought Vopex with my own money over 3 years ago and I've easily put over 100 plus hours into various games. So let's start with the fun stuff, the game recommendations. Third person games include Control, which has full 3D, but even using an RTX 3080, I couldn't get it to run well, so I used a cloud profile and ran it in DirectX 12 mode. This way I could use DLSS and ray tracing in Zbuffer 3D. It's a great game, it's kind of like a third person Doom with some pretty tough gun battles where you have to keep moving. You also gradually get various superpowers like telekinesis and the ability to fly. Batman Arkham Origins has flawless 3D, but you have to switch to DirectX 9 mode. It's pretty easy to do, but you'll probably need to Google it. Because it's an older game, you can run this game really well. I used to play this on my old GTX 1080, and it looked and ran great. Journey is a game I read so many positive things about, but looking at the gameplay, I thought it looked overhyped. After finally checking it out, I really enjoyed it. It's part art and part game. So it's not going to be for everybody, but I recommend at least giving it a try, and it's got some real nice 3D in Vorpex. Rise of the Tomb Raider is a game I played 5 years ago on the Xbox One, but I decided to replay it with Vorpex, and it's like experiencing the game all over again. It actually has 3D support built in, so you don't actually need Vorpex for this. If you go to display settings, turn stereo 3D on, and you can use something like virtual desktop or big screen, and enable side by side mode. You've got two sliders, Separation which you want to leave alone unless you've got a large or small IPD and you've got pop out which is how strong the 3D effect is. I turn this up a little because I like to have the 3D really pop out of the screen but that's a personal preference. If you go too high then it becomes hard to focus on the foreground and the background at the same time and it can cause some eye strain. I really enjoy side scrollers in Vorpex and some of my highlights over the past year include Little Nightmares 2. I created a cloud profile for this one which has got good 3D and it's a great game. If you haven't played the first game then you want to play that first and there's an official profile built into Vorpex. It looks incredible in Vorpex and you really get a great sense of scale playing with these little characters trying to survive the very dark and twisted world. Far Lone Sails is a really cool game where you control a land ship in a dystopian environment. You have to stop off to get supplies to fuel your engine and clear blockages. You have to manage your land ship as you make your way through severe storms. It only lasts about 3 hours, but I loved it and I've uploaded a profile for it to the cloud with perfect, really strong 3D. Ori and the Will and the Wisps was one of the best games of 2020, and it works really well in Vorpex with proper 3D. There's a section near the beginning where Ori flies on the back of an owl, and it looks incredible. Gris is like Journey in the fact that it's part game and part art. You're probably looking at the footage wondering why you'd want to play this in VR, but it looks surprisingly good. The 2D is in layers, so you have things in the foreground that feel like they're close to your face as you walk past, and the background looks like it's far away. The game's really enchanting with some great music that really moves you emotionally. Seasons After Fall is similar to Gris, that looks 2D, but it actually has even more depth and layers. I've uploaded a profile for the cloud for this one. It's a puzzle platformer where you control a fox that can change the seasons, so sometimes you might have to change it to winter to freeze a lake to cross it, for example. It's a very charming game with a good soundtrack. Some other games that don't fit into these categories, Art of Rally is a top-down racer with a really cool art style. I had a lot of fun with this game and created a profile on the cloud. It's got really strong 3D with just some minor shader issues but nothing major. The Room 3 is one of my favourite puzzle games. I also played the first two with Vorpex, but I could only get one to work with Zbuffer, and two has a cloud profile, but you have to run it in low settings, otherwise you get a black screen. The third game has really strong, perfect 3D, and it looks great. It's the best out of the three anyway, and four's just released, which I could probably get working as well. Mortal Kombat 10 has an official profile with great 3D. You need to turn off shadows and ambient occlusion as they act weird when the camera zooms in and out. You still get the environment shadows which cast onto the player and it still looks fantastic. I also turned up the 3D strength to 2 and it looks like you've got figurines fighting right in front of you. Let's finish my recommendations with some first person games. 
I mentioned in the old video that I hadn't found a game that I was happy to play in full VR. And unfortunately, a year later, that's still true. It's not for the lack of trying. Some games that I've tried include Ghost Runner, Black Mesa, Portal 2, Metro 2033, The Stanley Parable, and Crisis 2. All of these have great 3D, and I enjoy playing them all, but I personally play them in immersive screen mode with head tracking enabled. Let me try and show you why. If I use Ghost Runner as an example, when using full VR and I move my head around, there's a slight delay to the image moving, so it feels like it's being dragged rather than you're actually looking around. Also, I'm not sure if you can see this in the video, but when I move my head, some of the world distorts and warps. With immersive screen pulled right up to your face and some head tracking, it feels almost VR, but you don't get any of the warping or weird feeling. Some games are better than others, but none that I've tried feel like actual native VR, where you're looking around and feel like you're actually there. They all have some issues, and I just personally prefer to play them in immersive screen mode. Some games also have game breaking issues, like Resident Evil 7, which some people say plays great and is better than the PSVR version. Personally, I disagree. If you run it at 4K, it looks great. There's still a little weirdness when you move your head, but it's minor, and it's probably the most playable one I've tried. The main problems though, are some of the actual walls in the game are missing. Like in this example, there's a wooden wall you can see with 3D off. Now if I turn 3D on, you can see it disappears. I've also read that the hair is missing from all the characters, apart from Mia, but I didn't get that far to find out. The worst issue though, is when you get a pistol. You can see in this video, it's got a really jarring, bright silhouette of the gun that moves around independently. It looks absolutely terrible in the headset. Someone told me to increase the camera height in the Vorpex menu, but when you do that, you're 6 foot 6 and can barely fit through the door, you can't see your gun anymore, and your aim doesn't even line up with the in-game reticle. I've put 6 hours into this game, and I've only had to play an hour of it, so I've spent 5 hours dicking about trying to fix it with no luck. If people are happy to play it like this, then that's obviously their choice, but it's not for me. So let's move on to my tips and tricks. Tip number one, use the cloud profiles. A lot of people probably already know this, but if a game isn't officially supported by Vorpex, you can go to the cloud profiles which are made by the community to see if someone's already made one. I've made several myself, and I've used loads that have been made from the community. They do range in quality, and most of the time I have to tweak things to my liking, which I'll cover in more detail in a minute. Tip number two is create your own profile. If there isn't an official profile or one in the cloud, you can create your own. Setting up a basic profile is actually pretty easy. The best way to do it is to copy a profile from an existing game. You need to figure out what game engine the game is using. Most indie games use either Unity or Unreal Engine. If it's an older Unity game, I recommend using the Firewatch profile. If it's a newer Unity game, then I recommend using Ori and the Will of the Wisps. For Unreal games, if it's an old Unreal Engine 3 game, I recommend using the Bioshock Infinite profile. For an older Unreal Engine 4 game, try using the Abzu profile, and for newer Unreal Engine 4 games, use the Jedi Fallen Order profile. If it's a really new game, especially if it's something AAA, then it probably uses DirectX 12, which unfortunately doesn't work with full 3D right now. You can get most games to hook with the Red Dead Redemption 2 profile with Z Buffer 3D. Some games don't hook because they have anti-cheat. There are usually ways around it, but it involves some dodgy software that I'm personally not willing to use. If an older game uses its own engine, and if there isn't a profile, then if you see what other games the same developers made, and see if there's a profile for one of those to copy. If you're still struggling, you can also go and ask about a specific game on the official Vorpex forums. Tip number three, enable expert settings in the Vorpex configuration screen. This gives you a few extra options to fine tune the 3D. Let's go over these settings now. If a game uses Geometry 3D, then the main option is 3D Strength, which as you may have guessed, adjusts the strength of the 3D. If it's an official profile, you probably want to leave this at 1, but some custom profiles might need to go higher. If you go too high, the image can start to look strange and it causes eye strain. Camera Height Modifier lets you adjust the camera up or down, and Field of View Enhancement lets you increase the field of view to higher levels than the game will allow. Be careful with these though, as most of the time they'll cause visual glitches and pretty jarring popping. The field of view adjustment can be handy when you're trying to play a first person game and you have the screen really close. This way you can adjust it out more so it feels a bit more natural. 
Focal offset is something that I discovered recently, and with some games you can really make the 3D pop. Generally, I will add positive numbers to this. Usually, I go around 0.1 to 0.15. It's handy for side scrollers and third person games if you want to make it look like a miniature character is actually standing in front of you. This is also known as the dollhouse effect, which is not for everyone, but I really like it in certain games, so have a play around with it and see what you think. For Z Buffer, the options for 3D are much more limited. You've got 3D strength which increases the amount of pop you get from the 3D. Usually you want to stick around 2, as any higher tends to cause halos around the player character and other objects in the game. Depth weighting is supposed to make the 3D stronger for things closer or further away from the character. Personally I just leave it a default as I've never noticed any difference when I play around with it. Lastly you have focal distance which it may be placebo, but when I used it in control it seemed to really bring out the depth for the 3D when I increased it. Have a play around with this one and see what you think. Z Buffer is very subtle in its effect, but it's one of those things that you notice when you switch it off and back on again, and I much prefer to play a game with it on than just flat 2D. Tip number 4. Use the additional options to tweak the screen. This is going to definitely be a personal preface thing, but if you're using immersive screen or cinema screen, then if you click on more screen options, there are loads of settings you can tweak. You've got things like screen scale, curvature, and you can adjust the background image used. If it's a first person game, I tend to use the immersive screen mode, because you can get the screen much closer. But for third person or side scrollers, I usually use cinema screen. I use the lounge environment, I turn off MSAA, which helps with performance, I bring the screen as close as I want it, add a little curvature, and I bring the room darkness right down. I personally prefer this over an immersive screen, as I like the ambient lighting you get from the screen, which helps blend the screen out to the environment better than immersive screen mode, so you get more immersed in the game, but play around with it and see what you prefer. Tip number 5. Use some head tracking. You can actually add head tracking when using a virtual screen, so even though you're not using full VR, you can still look around a little and it really helps with aiming if you're playing with a gamepad. I also recommend turning on mouth smoothing if it's an option, as it stops all the little movements your head makes naturally. If you find a game where you set it at 100 in the screen settings, but it still isn't high enough, you can turn it up more by going to head tracking menu and increasing the HT sensitivity. Tip number 6. Leave crystal image at normal. I've seen several custom profiles that set this to aggressive. I personally don't recommend this. I've turned the resolution a little nightmares 2 to 1080p to exaggerate it, but you can see with it on, it has much more noise and it really shows any shimmer in the image. Tip number 7. Use Vorpex Sharpening. This is an option in the image settings and it really brings out details in the game. I personally recommend running at 1440p resolution minimum, more on this shortly, but I usually go with about 1 to 1.25. If you go too high, it can make it look unnatural. Here is Rise of the Tomb Raider with no sharpening. Here it is at a 1, and here it is at a 2. It's difficult to see on a YouTube video, but it makes a big difference in the headset. You can also adjust the gamma here, which adjusts the brightness of the game, and saturation, which affects the colours. Lastly, I want to talk about some performance tips and general in-game settings. You want to run a 1440p minimum. 4K if your PC will allow it. If you've got a monitor or TV that only outputs 1080p, then you won't be able to select it in-game. If you've got an Nvidia GPU, you can actually add some extra resolution options by right-clicking on your desktop and selecting the Nvidia control panel. If you go to Manage 3D Settings and select DSR Factors, 2 times and 4 times are 1440p and 4K. I have a few other options ticked so I can fine tune the resolution for performance if I need to. You want to set your desktop resolution to 4K for the options to show in game. One thing you may find, especially in Unreal Engine games, is if you use it in full screen mode, the game won't actually change the resolution. To fix this, go to either windowed or borderless. If you're struggling with performance, the best things to adjust to help with performance are shadows, ambient occlusion and reflections. In most games you can turn shadows to medium and you barely see a difference. Ambient occlusion is a real performance killer 
So turn it off and see how it looks. Turn it to low if it makes too much of a negative impact on the visuals. Reflections should be turned to medium or low, and screen space reflections generally don't work properly in 3D anyway, so turn them off. I also turn off things like film grain and motion blur. And that's it. If you found this useful, then consider subscribing, and if you've got any other tips or game recommendations, please put them in the comments.